This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. It is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, PA. And this is a show where we talk about indie wrestling with indie wrestlers, people around indie wrestling, which is people that like pro wrestling sometimes. Uh, and uh, you can check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com and, of course, IndieWrestling.us, where a lot of our uh, guests on the show, including uh, tonight's guests, uh, are, you can see them in action on a lot of the titles uh, there through Rise, IWC, and uh, many, many more. And the list is growing every day. Uh, and, of course, uh, like I said, check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Subscribe to Indie Mayhem Show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. And the video versions over on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page. And, again, subscribe so you do not miss an episode. Support the show on Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. If you do like what we're doing here, please, as you're supporting Indie Wrestling, and please also support us uh, a little the independent podcasters as well. Uh, so uh, this week, we are blessed to have a tag team join us uh, in tandem. Uh, we have Lawless and Order here in <laughs> studio. Of course, uh, the gavel, David Lawless, who has joined us here previously on the show, as well as on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Thank you for joining us tonight. Of course. You're welcome, morons. And also, uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for um dressing up the set as well the giant gavel if you're on video is in the background uh with our Rusev day calendar uh and and uh as we uh we, we discussed that last episode as well about the size of your gavel and uh maybe we'll talk about that a little bit more here on the show as well but also joining him flanking him is and backing him up you could say is officer dan murphy joining us on the show i know i've seen you uh, as part of IWC, and we were just talking about debuted about a year, almost a year ago. Yeah. yeah. So, February twenty fifth, my mo- my one year. Yes, coming up. So you're the newbie on the show. Yes. I'm not counting just being on Wrestling Mayhem show as part of Mayhem Mania. Go check that out, guys. Uh, from this week's episode, I believe we're six oh eight. If you want to see uh, their involvement there, if you're catching us later. But uh, we, so you're the newbie. So I need to have the icebreaker question for you, so people can get to know you a little bit. Uh, let's break some ice. What is your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Oh, I talk about this all the time with people. Um, I believe it was 1996, Monday Night Raw with Goldust versus Ahmed Johnson. Wow. And I don't remember who wins or anything like that, but I do remember that was my first exposure to wrestling. Mm-hmm. Other than when I played T-ball, I had like a Hulk Hogan glove, but I didn't know who he was. I just thought it was a cool glove. Yeah. Awesome. So what what kind of uh uh drew you from from seeing it there? Like did you just kind of capture onto wrestling from then on? Um yeah, I mean my my brother was huge into wrestling. His favorite wrestler was Big Boss Man. Mm-hmm. Ironic, I know. Um but uh yeah, after that I was like, wow, this is this is cool. People are beating each other up, you know, then they're they're in their <laughs> they're in their underwear and you know, it, it was cool, man. And you got this big gold guy, you know, with face paint and stuff it was cool man mm-hmm. I, and i started like um just going to like the video stores renting tapes like you know i rent like various wrestlemania survivor series you know the, the big four yeah in your houses like those are awesome too um but yeah and so what what made you transition from being a fan to uh deciding you want to get into the ring um i don't know it's just like as a as a kid, you know, everybody has their aspirations. I always said to myself and to my parents, they thought I was crazy, but I was said, you know, I want to be a wrestler one day. It'd be fun, you know, um, just to go out there and entertain and just uh, go out there and just beat people up. And, you know, it's just, um, yeah. So about, uh, let's see, about two years ago or so, I approached Justin Plummer about training for his, uh, training for IWC. And, you know, I waited after the show. I was a little nervous, but uh, my wife kind of pushed me to just say, she said, you know, just just do it. Just go talk to him. And so I thank her for giving me that push. But, um, yeah, 
and after that it was just history from there you know nice training was brutal <laughs> but it was fun you know um and of course you guys have teamed up here like we said lawless in order a you know, well, yes well no there's a funny story about this yeah too. i was gonna so, say how did this this happen well so um i i had received a message from uh dan's trainer and they had said that hey we got this great idea you're a lawyer dan's a cop we want to put you guys together and become lawless in order we just learned two weeks ago that we share the same birthday which is ironic enough as tag team partners but even before dan uh started in the business um, or at least debuted mm -hmm. we actually teamed up together um and if you go to the ring of honor website and go to the video on demand I don't know if you remember when Kenny King and Caprice Coleman and the big dog Rhett Titus were doing the cabinet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they would use local talent to play the security officers when they would come out. So Dan and I are down at uh, Ring of Honor at Stage AE, probably when they came in in September of 2016. We're setting up the ring. They said, hey, we need two big guys to come out as the cabinet security. So Officer Dan Murphy and the gavel David Lawless teamed up as the cabinet security. After having just met that day, we got to stand ringside for one of the coolest four-way tag team matches that I've ever seen. It was War Machine versus the Briscoes versus uh, yes. Kenny King and Red Titus versus the Beer City Bruiser and Silas Young. Um, Hanson from War Machine did a flip off of the stage at Stage AE. And we're, we're all standing ringside for this as this is going on. Had the coolest seat in the house. So We were doing this the whole night. Yeah, <laughs> pretending like we were talking in earpieces. <laughs> wait, um, did they give you earpieces? No. No, they're just, you, no. Wait, you just hold your finger up to your, your empty ear. And, Correct. Uh, I mean, <laughs> wrestling fans don't know. No, I mean, no, 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 no. The technology, yeah. So if someone <laughs> endeavors to go back and, and look at those video on demands, you'll see that Dan and I had teamed up then. I mean, and we had no idea that this tag team was going to come about then. Mm -hmm. So it's a cool little uh, throwback story. That's awesome. Yeah. Before they were superstar story. You know? Yeah. And of course, like, <laughs> the last interview, we talked about where David Lawless came back and it came from. And you know, that's that's your real life. Like that's, that's yeah. you know, a lawyer in real life. Yep. And, and uh, so where did uh, the, the, the cop come from for uh, Officer Dan Murphy? Um, actually, I was kind of struggling with Coming up with a character, I was like, well, "What could I? What could I do?" I mean, mm -hmm. and then my trainer, who will remain unnamed, um, he was like, "You know, you would make a good cop." And I was like, "You know, you you're right." And everybody kept saying, "Oh, you, you like watch Big Boss Man? You got to see everything he does." And I was just like, "I, I don't want to be a, like a carbon copy. I want to be like a different, mm -hmm. be a little different." Um, but you know, with all respect, due respect to uh, Big Boss Man, but um, yeah, my my trainer, he 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 just he he steered me the right way, and I think it's working because everybody gives me mm -hmm. like everybody says, oh, you know, you do a great job and everything. I was like, well, okay, it's working then. It's, it's been interesting. Um, uh, in in your class, and we've had several people from your class uh, debuting, I think, at the same show there for IWC at the Proving Grounds last February, uh, twenty seventeen. Um, like there was a lot of variety in uh, personalities of gimmicks, right? And I love, like, for instance, you came out and you're you're a, a cop gimmick, right? You have a lawyer gimmick. Like there was, there's more characters that seem to be happening right now, uh, especially in that promotion. I think you're seeing that a lot, a lot of places in Indies, like that Absolutely. kind of like '90s, like yeah, characters, right? Like, are you guys seeing that, or is there there's some thinking that when you guys are are, are doing what you're doing? I, I agree. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, people are trying to stand out, differentiate themselves. I think, too, with social media being as prolific as it is right now, you know, the early 2000s on the indie scene, you had just great pure wrestlers. Right. Now, with Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and, you know, all the Snapchat and uh, you need something that is recognizable that people can sink their teeth into. So... For instance, you know, Dan has his whistle and has the, the file when we go to shows. I have the business cards that I throw out. The promos that we cut are in line with what a police officer or what a lawyer would do. It's a recognizable character. I think the product, or at least social media itself, has forced people to ha develop uh, more unique characters that people can identify with. Absolutely. And, and, and sticking out a bit. Your thoughts? Oh, yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, like, 
our training class um, is, is very unique. You know, you got fashion model, you got the crazy girl, you got the actress, um, you got the guy who's invisible, but he's not invisible. Um, <laughs> and you got Hooven who plays his real life self. Um, um, but two, yeah, two positives and negatives. Yeah. You got Jamie who doesn't say a word, but you know, right. he gets the job done. Um, but yeah, the, just very unique characters in IWC. I, I think people need that because it's like, you know, it's like you're, it's kind of like you're watching TV and you want to see characters. You don't want to see somebody that looks like, you know, you, I, mm. you, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. So yeah. Absolutely. And, and I had never thought, you know, when I was approached about the idea of, of, Dan and I tagging together, I'd never thought, you know, who would the Galvin David Lawless tag with would, you know, people had made suggestions. You have a paralegal, you have a uh, court reporter. Um, did, but, you, did you have a paralegal at one point? No, but everyone has been, has been saying that I should have a court reporter or a paralegal with me at some yeah. point or a manager or something like that, that. That, that, you know, somehow does all the work in the matches. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And you get the victory. Yeah, exactly. Um, makes sense. But then I thought about a police officer and I thought, well, you know, we both need each other in our professions. Police mm -hmm. officers arrest criminals. They need lawyers to prosecute the cases. Lawyers are investigating cases that they're prosecuting against individuals. They need cops to go out and dig up the dirt. So mm -hmm. when you combine my knowledge and Dan's ability to investigate people and gain information, you create a, a duo that is really unstoppable and can impose their will on anyone. And there's a fun thing. And, and Dan, you brought, you brought a, a lot. You're pointing to the file. There you. I love that you brought your. You brought you. It's everywhere. With it's me. everywhere. Mm -hmm. Also in the back of your trunk. Yes. Um, well, yep. we, we talked about the giant gavel again. It's here. Then you and that it, it's in the in your trunk and it'd be questionable when the cops pull you over. Now you have a police gear in the back of your car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you never know when you need the file. That's I mean, true. That's true. It's got a vast amounts of information in here. And again, you're you're doing the whistle. That unfortunately, um, R.I.P. the whistle uh, at Reloaded this past weekend with IWC. Yeah, the, the Titan. He destroyed it. The so. Titan. Uh, that, that big bully. <laughs> I know. Be a star. He, he is. Yeah, he is going to get his comeuppance. Yes. Um. Uh, let's talk about it. like what, where did the whistle come from? Or were you watching? Who did it? Alphonse Fon used to do that with uh, the RVD. R right? RVD's yeah, manager. Yeah. I didn't have him in mind, but I, um, like the gavel was saying, um, you got to differentiate yourself. Something that stands out, and from all the people I've talked to, you know, the people in the locker room or like fans, you know, the fans hate it. They tell me to stop doing it, and then I want to do it more. I'm a little close mm -hmm. to it, so I'm not really crazy about it either. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, people love it, people hate it. You know, it's get, it's being talked about. I think it was Chavo Guerrero who said, um. Whether you're being booed or cheered is that's all that matters. If they're not giving you any response, then you're doing your job wrong. Yeah, absolutely. I and actually, you know, Dan does stuff. So I knew Dan had the whistle and played the whole cop gimmick, but um, just recently, even our match in January at Rural Valley, I remember watching it back, and he's blowing the whistle as Jamie. Jameson is running at him, about to give him a drop kick, and you can hear him blowing the whistle like he's gonna stop. When he's charging at that's him. That's what so, I was hoping for. <laughs> and I was like, I'm cracking up the whole time I'm watching this. It's just, it's those little things that make such a difference with the character that I mm -hmm. appreciate. Yeah, it's been kind of like a reactionary thing and, and you know, uh, and, and something that everybody else can kind of play with as well. Oh, here's so, some of the carnage. Yeah, yeah some of the insane carnage. Since I got you guys, I, I was unfortunately at ringside for this insane six-person oh. table match, which means at least five tables are being broken. Sometimes on purpose, sometimes not. Yep. It seems uh, there's a there's a lot of like for instance, there's a lot of just you setting up a table here. Uh, <laughs> so um, it was. Was this your first time setting up a table? Uh, it was the first time setting up a table with nothing to grab onto because yeah. you know I, I'm trying to grab it from the from the mat. My head's also bleeding at this point too. Which, That's right. You're oh little, yeah. You're concussed, didn't, you can't did, see. Didn't help me at all. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you can see me checking for more blood there. Uh, <laughs> And that's and getting hit by the person again that that, that Marshall Gambino. Yeah. Um, that was that was one that was absolutely sick. Yeah. Well, I don't I don't know if you look back at the footage, but I because I think I caught it in the edit. Um, there's a point where um the match is about to start, and uh, Marshall kind of gives this kind of look yep. to the camera. Yep. And and yep. I've seen this look. I've yep. known Marshall for uh, since like 2006 at, at these shows, and and that's usually the the something bad is about to happen. 
look. Right. Yep. And here's you before the concussion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which and, and he just wails off, hits you in the back with a chair, and it catches the back of your head. Bradley Brothers. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And well, this is this is this is us doing what we do best, which is just mouthing off to the fans and yes. telling them why they're morons. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I mean, that was one scary. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, it it happens. Um, you know what you're getting into in this business, and uh, I would like to for it not to have happened. But mm -hmm. uh, it's a cool story, and um, now. I have probably at least two nurses from the West Penn emergency room that are coming down to watch <laughs> ASWA. So hey. it works out well. Whatever you got to do to sell tickets. Right? I, could, I, I, could, I actually couldn't have been prouder when it happened either. I, uh, yeah. You know, they were asking me what, what took place. And uh, I was like, yeah, I got hit in the back of the head with a chair. And if you're on video with us, you're going to see it right there. Oh. oh. Sound like a gunshot, seriously. It did. It did. It was, it was sickening in person. I, you, I can't even... And not here, react on ringside, apparently. Here's where Dan's blowing the whistle as he gets drop kicked. Nope, yeah. stop. Oh, there it nope. is. <laughs> yep. So, um, you know, I think, too, we all thought the last time we were at Rural Valley, we did this Rural Valley lockdown match, mm -hmm. which was a very unique concept of um, your partner was uh, handcuffed at ringside. And then you had to climb a pole and unlock that person. And then after you unlock that person, you were eligible to win the match. We had tables, chairs, uh, uh, tasers. Uh, barbed wire. Barbed wire. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it was a pretty crazy match. And then lo and behold, we had this six-pack challenge, which became an elimination table match. And what's funny is if you listen to Chris LaRusso's commentary on that, when I'm the first one to go through the table, and Nick Lendl, who's pull, pulling double duty that night in commentating and announcing, gets off the announcing uh, headset and, and then announces that I've been eliminated. And you hear LaRusso like, oh, that's how we're doing eliminations. <laughs> so, you know, like he, it was like, oh, there's going to be four more people going through tables at this yeah, point. Yeah. Um, I, I remember seeing some of the people in the crowd after that match. And it just, I mean, they just looked devastated, <laughs> like so drained from watching what everyone had done in that match. And there was still oh. a main event next. Yeah. 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 And that, you know, that's a testament to what, what uh, Andrew Pallas and Dylan Bostic were able mm -hmm. to do there, too. You know, no doubt in my mind, the talent that they have, but still got the crowd going. It's unbelievable. You learn so much from watching people as talented as them and to see what they did and how they worked the crowd and brought them back into it after that match. Um, it was amazing. So, you know, as we were getting ourselves cleaned up, still learning stuff. The business. Absolutely. Uh, we have some. We actually have some commentary from the chat room too. Uh, first of all, uh, Wheels, our, our friend, uh, uh, sound guy over at RWA. Yeah. He says uh, Officer Dan and uh, he needs a fireman partner also, and they can be called the first responders. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Um, in December, I had a match against a fireman, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Jason Tyler, mm -hmm. and uh, who I believe has joined us in the chat room too. What's that? I believe he was also joined us in the chat room. Who? Uh, Jason Tyler. Mm -hmm. There we go. Oh boy! There's your fireman. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, that was for Black Diamond uh, down in West Virginia. Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. There you go. And and, and Alex uh, Alex Miller out there on the West Coast. He's AS. Have you guys ever wrestled in a prison? No, but if it if we get booked there, we'll I've heard there's opportunities. I, I think Joe Dabrowski has some connection and might have done a show there once at one of those. In a prison. In Ooh. a prison. We would definitely get a reaction from the crowd. Yes. Right. <laughs> they have a prison in Moundsville, right? There's a there's a prison in uh in Pittsburgh. Well, I mean, the we'll, ACJ. Let's go. Let's go. Let's yeah, do it. Let's go. <laughs> as long as we don't wrestle prisoners because they might actually like shank us, so uh, we don't want that. Well, like, it's kind of funny though because some <laughs> pr to prisoners, cops are their worst enemies, but mm -hmm. lawyers are their best friends. So there might be a little bit y of a... You guys might not have to be able to team together. Yeah, we one, might have right? to face each other. Yeah, actually. yeah, yeah. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. Uh, so at, at this point, you know, uh, 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 well, since we've had you on last, uh, we, we talked about a little bit on Mayhem Show um you've been kind of everywhere lately yeah um i know uh you had a uh, great match with uh, lee moriarty a couple months ago in rise thank you um and uh you know it, it's really you know kind of kind of showing what you can do out there in a lot of different situations yeah i've i've been very fortunate in the opportunities that i've had since we last spoke last time 
Um, I was just wrestling at PWX, and now I'm wrestling with KSWA, Rise, and IWC. So um, it's given me an opportunity to learn a lot more as well. I'm tagging with Dan at IWC. I'm doing you know a singles uh, thing at Rise, and now at KSWA, Officer Dan's coming in uh, with me as well, and we're kind of doing singles and then maybe a tag scenario also. So um, just, you know, getting out there as much as I can, learning as much as I can, trying to showcase my talents as much as I can, and uh, having a lot of fun working the shows, interacting with the people. And also the promos recently have been a lot of fun, too. I've had a lot of fun shooting the promos and editing them for the show. So it's been... And we were talking about your image for tonight, uh, which is one of the I'm a moron uh, yes images yeah from uh, <laughs> the signs from andrew denardo one of the one of the yes. best uh, independent wrestling fans out there great great individual too great human being but uh you know him and and some of the other individuals like brad are people that it's just fantastic to to perform in front of because they get it they appreciate it and it's really nice to 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 wrestle in front of them awesome awesome so um We'll go to Officer Dan first. Well, first of all, both of you guys, what are you watching these days for kind of inspiration? Are there any wrestlers out there that really kind of got your attention? I'm going to let Dan both answer that first because there's probably too <laughs> many for, for me to rattle off. I mean, I'll keep it short and sweet, I guess. Um, guys I watched growing up were like, I mean, I, like Shelton Benjamin, uh, Eddie Guerrero, uh, if, if I'm allowed to say this name, um, Chris Benoit. You're allowed to hear. Um, yep. You're okay. allowed to hear. Um, like Owen Hart, guys like that. Like, I mean, obviously, I don't emulate their their style, but um, if I if I was to talk about something I like their style, like I would say like Sheamus. Like he's that hard hitter, like that just brutal, you know, wrestler. Um, but yeah, but as far as what I'm watching these days, um, I I mean, I love Ring of Honor. I mean, it's just. Um, it, it's just something to watch that's I, I would honestly say is a little better than WWE. That's my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. It's um, obviously that wrestling is great on Ring of Honor. And uh, yeah, so watch Ring of Honor, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting a lot easier, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, what about you, Lars? Well, um, <clears throat> probably my favorite wrestler to watch is Adam Cole, hands down. Mm-hmm. I think he's one of the best wrestlers in the world. Roderick Strong, I've been watching a lot of what... I have been watching a lot of these guys for a while now. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I watch a lot of PWG, not necessarily for any wrestlers in particular. I mean, they their their card from top to bottom is super talented. Um, and what I try to do is I find certain things that wrestlers will do, and I try to incorporate that into what I do. Uh, you know, with Lee, with my match with Lee, I kind of started going with this barrister, the neckbreaker persona, which. You know, I'm trying to incorporate as many neck moves as I can in. So uh, I watched a Jay White match recently, and uh, I saw something that he did in there that I was able to kind of tweak a little bit and make my own. Um, anything that uh, Adam Cole does, absolutely, I'm watching. And, and Cody, Cody Rhodes. Anything mm-hmm. that Cody Rhodes does, I'm watching as well. That's really an individual that has transformed themselves and knows their character and plays it really well. And the arrogant side of him... <laughs> is a fantastic inspiration for the gavel David Lawless. Awesome. And uh, lastly, what's the best and worst thing about indie wrestling uh, for you guys? I guess since we've had you last on, uh, Lawless, and, and for you in your first year. Um, the best thing is it's, uh, I don't know, it's, 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 it's like, just like for the fans, it's an escape for us too. You know, that's like the best part about it. You know, you get to go out there and just, you know, play a character, you get to entertain, um, I get to blow a whistle all all night. Um, <laughs> I I even like when when like everybody else is selling their merch and everything. I'm out there like messing with fans, telling them you know slow down or pull your pants up. You know it's just it's just little stupid stuff like that that makes it so entertaining. Um, um I don't know. I, I haven't really found. I mean, I've only been in a year, so I mean, I haven't really found a worse part. But uh, I guess um, I guess when I was training. I guess the worst part was those three-hour trips to Clearfield when I when I was driving the truck with the ring in it and everything, and you know you're the first one up and you're the last one to go home, and it's just like wow. But you look back at it and you're like, all right, you know, uh, you paid your dues, and now look where you are now, you know. So, a shot of you guys uh, over 
I think it was Beaver Falls. Yeah, this was yeah. The, this was the debut Our of Lawless debut, and yeah. Order. Actually, yeah. we were in a uh, four way tag team match with the Upper Echelon, Marshall and Jamie, and the Sexy Talented Dudes. Nice. Yeah, and this is this is the show where Jamie Jameson did the moonsault off of the. Um, uh, the th- like the entrance to the to yeah the, the entrance gym. to the yeah. gym it was like ten fifteen feet up like yeah crazy. so so there's a funny story about that too which I'll take two minutes but um so I got a message from from Dan's trainer they had this idea for the Lawless and Order uh, tag team and at that point I had made the decision that I was going to be taking some time away from uh, some taking some time off but then they came to me with this tag team idea and I said oh this is great so I had a commitment at rise that night before so i wrestled the first match on the rise show and they they didn't announce who dan's tag team partner was so dan had a mystery partner uh and it was cool because damien who was actually doing the uh photos for the show didn't even know that i was going to be there so when my music mm-hmm. went off he went crazy but i'm calling dan the, the photographer at ringside by the way yeah right yeah, yeah. so i'm calling so i have it's about a probably a, an hour and 45 minute drive from connellsville to beaver fall seems right so i get so i'm relying on dan to put this match together and just kind of tell me what my spots are so my first show at iwc i've never worked with any of the people in the ring i'm calling dan on my way there and dan's like yeah we're putting this match together it's gonna be pretty sweet uh it's gonna be a uh, no holds barred match um it's gonna end with you getting a chair shot from me and then uh, someone's going to frog splash me off of a ladder. Uh, and Jamie's talking about doing a moonsault off of the bleachers here. It's going to be cool. And I'm like, I'm driving and I'm like, I can't even wrap my head around what we're going to be doing in this match. And I get there, we have like 15 minutes to go over it. And then we just go out and I don't yeah. even see what this balcony is that he's going to do a moonsault off yeah. of until I get out there. And the whole time I'm just thinking, man, like, I hope this is okay. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it was awesome. That was such a so much fun that night, and um, yeah, I, I remember. You know, everyone took care of everyone. It was a great match, and um, what a way to debut! There you go. And for you guys on video, here's the uh, moon salt. I think in a moment here. Yep. Uh, so the first Corey Futuristic falls off, pulls the IWC, pulls the banner sign down, down. Yep. Reveals a tiger face behind oh, it, <laughs> which I, I thought tiger. was great. Which was completely on hard cam the entire time. Jamie's kind of waiting. Jamie's kind of waiting. And moonsault. Yep. Wow. And he, I don't. And, I don't know if you guys remember, but he hit chest flexor in the head with his boot, and like he, I don't know, he couldn't see or something, and it was just wow. It was. Is brutal. that when he was like wearing a helmet afterwards? Or yes. Something? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. for other reasons, but yeah. Well, there's that. Too. Well, and then <laughs> so then this weekend in the match that we had to reloaded when we were on Team Larusso, Jamie did a moonsault again <laughs> off the top rope onto a group of us. Seems to be a trend. It's a common theme. Yeah. Yes, it was, it, that sounds like your best and worst in wrestling. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> watching Jamie Jameson moonsault is the best. Yes, catching Jamie Jameson for a moonsault is, is the, the worst. worst. Yeah, that sounds good. Anything else you want to add to that? <laughs> no, I just want to. Um, I want to thank everyone out there for supporting Lawless in Order, supporting the Gavel David Lawless, and supporting all the promotions around the Pittsburgh area and the ones that we wrestle at. Um, like Dan said, it is an escape for us as well. Mm-hmm. And one of the best things is getting to perform for people. It, it truly is amazing. So thank you for having us on and getting to tell our story. And thank you so much to the fans out there for allowing us to do what we do. All right. Thank you guys. And again, uh, where can people find you online? Uh, online, it's facebook.com slash gavel David Lawless. Instagram is gavel David Lawless. And Twitter is at gavel Lawless. And you can find Officer Dan Murphy on Facebook. Just type in Officer Dan Murphy. And on Twitter, you can find me at at IWC Officer Dan. There you go. Thank you so much, guys. And of course, you can look up either of these guys on IndieWrestling.us. And a few of the promotions that they work with are available there as well. Uh, if you have any ideas who you would like us to chat with or any questions for anybody coming up, check out the schedule over on IndieWrestling.us's uh, Facebook page uh, in the events section uh, for Indie Mayhem Show Live. Or uh, hit us up at uh, Indie Mayhem at SorgatronMedia.com with your thoughts and at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Uh, so thank you for joining us. Thank you, everybody, joining us in the live chat room here after a Wrestling Mayhem Show recording here on a late Tuesday night. And until next time, please support Indie Wrestling. Dismissed.
This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.